just want to take a moment to introduce a, a dear friend of mine uh, who I have known for over 30, 35 years now. Uh, today, our the sermon will be brought by Mr. Sikinder Parikshit. Uh, just, uh, you know, since he's speaking for the first time, I thought I'd just give a, take a moment to just introduce him. He is uh, retired, of course, uh, and he was working with the health department of the government of uh, Andhra Pradesh. He was one of those, uh, he's our, one of our senior most members. And I still remember the struggles that uh, he used to have along with many others with regards to Sabbath keeping and all of those uh, issues that we used to face. Uh, his late wife, uh, Vijay Kumari, many of you know, passed away. And uh, today he survived by uh, uh, rather, uh, uh, Sikinder has two daughters. Uh, Sushma, the elder one, is in the United States. And uh, Seema, of course, is with him uh, here in Hyderabad. Uh, he has been a member of the pastoral committee of the Rockwood Memorial Baptist Church when he lived in Karnool. And uh, he is, in one sense, an expert in church management. And we are happy to have him here in Hyderabad for the sermon today, uh, my dear friend Sikinder Parich. Thank you, Zakaria, sir. Good morning to you all. Today is Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday is the first Sunday after Pentecost. Trinity Sunday celebrates the Christian doctrine of the Trinity, the three persons of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In reply to our God's calling, every one of us, we reply and respond to his calling and turn the pages of our life. We journey back through the milestones of our life. We admit our faults, mistakes, sins, and uh, we put before him for forgiveness. He forgives us and makes us walk in righteousness. Baptism is the turning point for calling. Calling itself is a baptism, is a turning point for us. Water baptism is only, it's only material, but uh, it is also important. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, chapter 16th verse, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. That is the Holy Spirit he gives after ascension. In Galatians 5th chapter, 22nd and 23rd verse says, but the fruit of this Holy Spirit is Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. These are the blessings God gives after the after He calls and responds, and our our change takes place. And these are the blessings from loud self-control I have read. And and today, today's Bible sermon is about uh, freedom from shame, born of the spirit. As uh, Mrs. Uh, Praveen read the Bible sermon for today, 
that is uh, during jesus ministry he taught in public places performed many miracles and uh, proclaimed god's truth with great power and conviction many people loved him others hated him some people recognized his power and the mighty wisdom to which he taught but uh, could not uh, reconcile his message with their tradition one such person was nicodemus nicodemus was a leader of the jews people respected nicodemus for his great knowledge of the law his strict behavior and his great wisdom he heard of jesus and was very interested in his teaching but he had a lot of unanswered questions the pharisees were part of the religious leadership of the day many of them found their worth in the strict observance of the law most of them did not agree with jesus while some like nicodemus could not dismiss jesus great power and wisdom now this is the story about nicodemus nicodemus meeting jesus christ that is jesus christ meeting nicodemus it is not only the meeting between nicodemus and jesus christ the whole world is meeting with jesus christ on this occasion because we have to learn something from about the baptism or the change born again nicodemus is also mentioned in john 7th chapter 50th verse nicodemus who had gone to jesus earlier and who was uh, one of their own number and again in the uh, 19th chapter also nicodemus appears that is the 39th verse of 19th chapter he was accompanied by nicodemus the man who earlier had visited jesus at night nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes about 75 pounds on these two occasions also nicodemus was mentioned in the bible as a pharisee nicodemus a member of the sanhedrin the highest court of justice and the supreme council of ancient jerusalem and a rabbi nicodemus represents the quint essence the purest and most perfect or most typical form manifestation or embodiment of some quality or class of judaism in view of the official opposition to jesus already already suggested by john and carried out repeatedly throughout the gospel a prominent leader such as nicodemus could only have come to see jesus secretly nicodemus has come to jesus out of darkness Pravin, can you show the illustration? The art. He came to this at night. Nicodemus has come to, okay. Nicodemus has come to Jesus out of darkness eventually he became one of Jesus disciples Nicodemus associates himself with those who believed in Jesus because of the signs he had been working the kingdom of god is not to be seen merely through the miracles 
we can take away mr pravin the kingdom of god is not to be seen merely through the miracles that have impressed nicodemus it can only be experienced through a spiritual river spiritual river nicodemus takes the statement in a material sense it is ironical that a rabbi nicodemus should be puzzled by the figure of rebirth jesus insists on the necessity of spiritual birth for the kingdom of god if jesus actually spoke of both water and the spirit nicodemus may have thought of john's water baptism as the introduction to the spirit baptism given by christ in romans let, let us see and uh, study about the adoption in those times romans 8 chapter 12 to 17 but i will not be reading from 12 to 17 only from 13 to 14 verses for if you live according to the sinful nature you will die if we have got sinful nature we will die but if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body you will live because those who are led by the spirit of god are sons of god if we have got the spirit of god holy spirit it comes through the bible study fellowship and him singing and walking in the words of god if we do that we will be having a righteous life and in roman adoption it means roman adoption was always rendered more serious and more difficult by the roman patria potestas patria potestas in latin it means power of father this was the father's power over his family it was the power of absolute disposal and control in the early days it was actually the power of life and death in relation to his father a roman son never came of age no matter how old he was he was still under the patria potestas in the absolute possession and under the absolute control of his father in adoption a person had to pass one had to had to pass from one patria potestas to another that is from one generation to another that is change jesus adopts us father adopts us there were four main points in the roman law the adopted person lost all his all right in his old family and gained all the rights of a legitimate son in his new family in the most binding legal way he got a new father it followed that he became heir to his new father's estate even if other sons were born afterwards he did not affect his rights he was co-heir with them that is the second law third one is that in the third law the old life of the adopted person completely wiped out that is our old sins have been wiped out and we will be entering into the new life which god blesses us with grace for instance all debts were cancelled he was regarded as a new person entering into a new life in which the past had no part and the last and final point of the law is roman law is in the eyes of the law he was absolutely the son of his new father that he has come 
under the new rule that is father son and the holy spirit they rule the person who has been converted into as a christian and he learns the godly way of life and paul says that god's spirit witnesses with our spirit that we really are his children so paul is saying it is the holy spirit who is the witness to our adoption into the family of god once we were in the absolute control of our own sinful human nature but god in his mercy has brought us into his absolute possession the old life has no more rights over us god has an absolute right the past is cancelled and its debts are wiped out we can happily live the new life because god is our head faith is our constitution which deals with our problems with our life with our joy with our sadness everything it controls us god gives us strength in isaiah so the holy seed will be the stump until the lord has sent everyone far away and the land is utterly forsaken the past is cancelled and its debts are wiped out we begin a new life with god and become heirs of his children and all his riches whatever christ inherits we also inherit if christ had to suffer we also inherit that suffering but if christ was raised to life and glory we also inherit that life and glory in this present life we will be having many troubles yes and we will be having joy also and there will be success with all this we praise god it was paul's picture that when people became christians they entered into the family of god they did nothing to deserve it what jesus says comes from his shared knowledge with god the father his words and deeds witness to this fact in this sense rebirth and the presence of the spirit are earthly things if nicodemus cannot understand this if they cannot bring him to faith in jesus true character is obviously in no position to receive the revelation of heavenly things that is mysteries of which faith alone can provide the basis of understanding the heavenly things of which jesus has just spoken cannot be grasped by any person any man at will the only one who can speak authoritatively of heavenly things is the only person He has come down to heaven born as a human being and taught the people about the law about the word of god about the constitution of uh, the heavenly things and he was crucified and risen on the third day ascended to heaven of heavenly things is the only person who has both come down from heaven and ascended into heaven the son of man that is uh, john first chapter 
51st verse says he then added i tell you the truth you shall see heaven open and the angels of god ascending and descending on the son of man this is the conversation going on between jesus and nicodemus the reference to the bronze serpent is called symbol of salvation in john third chapter 13th verse no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven the son of man just as moses lifted up the snake in the desert so the son of man must be lifted up that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life for this reference the bronze serpent is called symbol of salvation the basis of comparison here is that in both cases salvation come salvation has come through a raising up it is raising up pravin can you show the other one just for 30 seconds you can see the cross like uh, pole and upon that a snake is there it is a, a 14th century art uh, we can see the person wearing the top hat so facing back the basis of comparison yes thank you pravin the basis of comparison here is that in both cases salvation has come through a raising up that is raising up the cross itself is raising up after he is uh, chained or uh, uh, pinned to the cross the cross is raised so much the son of man be raised up be raised up has a deliberately double significance when applied to christ referring to both his being raised up on the cross and to the glorification in the resurrection and ascension to the father numbers 21st chapter 8 and 9 verses says the lord said to moses make a snake and uh, put it up on a pole anyone who is bitten can look at it and live so moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole then when anyone who was bitten by a snake and looked at it the bronze statue a bronze snake he lived in setting a bronze serpent on a pole to cure the people's snake bites Moses was no doubt influenced by an ancient tradition linking serpents and medicines which is also found in Greek culture the crucifix form of the pole is a reminder that in the new testament the lifting up christ on the cross is also seen as healing a means to a new life the day the way they were healed was to look upon a bronze snake statue put on a pole now it is the medical profession uses this symbol the bronze serpent never became a permanent feature of israelite culture archaeology has shown that the cult of the snake was widely practiced in canaan probably in connection with the fertility rites the cure certainly looks like a case of sympathetic magic but john takes care to inform the reader that it was yahweh who healed us 
who healed the people. John, third chapter, 14 and 15, 14, 15 and 16 verses. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Indirectly refer to this incident to represent beforehand by a figure or type of Christ's own death. In 2 Kings 18th chapter 4th verse, 3rd and 4th verses of 2 Kings, the word of God says, Hezekiah, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David had done. He removed the high places, smashed the sacred stones, and cut down the Asherah poles. He broke into pieces the bronze snake Moses has made. For up to that time, the Israelites had been burning incense to it. It was called Nehustan, meaning unclean thing. Hezekiah broke it in pieces and uh, destroyed it completely. Hezekiah broke it in pieces and destroyed it completely. For up to that time, the Israelites had been burning incense to it, a cult that was considered an abuse. And uh, these are the explanations or metaphorical meaning which I understood. I am sharing with you. Is all the members with all the members? I thank you for hearing my sermon. Thank you.